Okay, here's hour number two for you. Back with us tonight is Dr. Bill Deagle to bring us up to date on a number of things. He is uh, following almost as many threads as a human being can follow, like I am. We're trying to keep you folks up to date on it. Fukushima continues to uh, spew bad news. Worse and worse and worse. CC-137 up 7,500% in one test well in just one week. And that shows that the water going into the Pacific is getting worse and worse. Hundreds, thousands, millions, billions. 13 billions more neutrons released from Fukushima than ever projected by the lying TEPCO. 13 billion more neutrons. I mean, it just goes on and on everywhere you look. Read the stories at the top of the page. You'll understand. Mass die-off seen in uh, birds, fish, continuing to get worse and worse and worse. This uh, all goes back to the Japan state secrets law, which has pretty well dried up most of our information from the inside. Uh, very little things going on. Even ENE News published one story in seven days. That's how much of a paucity of information there is coming out of Japan. Hello, Bill. Welcome back. Glad to hear you on the program uh, yeah. again. Chris, uh, there's an awful lot of issues going on. Today we had Chris Harris, our nuclear expert. That is his radio name. That's his real name. Sure. And, um, you know, we followed the story that you have posted up on your site, and we got into some of the details of it, and it's... Uh, it's so shocking that even if you're sitting down, you'll fall down. I mean, uh, I don't think people understand. And I've made a, a statement just so kind of to put a date on it. I said, you know, that between 2014, now 2015, and 2035, 2050, that Fukushima is an extinction-level event. Now, when I put that date, I'm just being facetious because it could be 2030, it could be 2040. I don't know. All we do know is that the level of radiation – is killing everything in the Pacific Ocean. And the Pacific Ocean is linked with every other ocean with transoceanic currents along the coastal region. So it only takes 26 months to, to transit the entire planet. We know there's also trans-equatorial uh, currents that carry um, high-speed water and radioisotopes from the northern to the southern hemisphere, equivalent to 300 times the Amazon rainforest every day. We know there's big surges of radiation that hit the west coast of Australia and New Zealand that have in the past happened in the last three years. And this level of radiation is an extinction level event just by itself. We're not even talking about, you know, nuclear war or uh, plagues or uh, coronal mass ejections or the things going on in the sun now, which are really unusual, like there are coronal holes that are occurring on the sun. What people should understand is there's a number of converging events, but just by itself, Fukushima Daiichi, the, the thing screaming out at us is that there's not even a dialogue to discuss what they could do to stop it. Uh, and, of course, there's not even discussion as to why all of a sudden there's a massive surge, whether it's an underground surge from the aquifer that burst into the ocean, or whether they just open containers and let them rip. We, or there was mm -hmm. a catastrophic rupture of sure. containers on the site. Yeah. We don't have any news coming out at all. It's a news blackout. And, in fact, if you try to release news in the local area, you go to prison in Japan. Uh, it also, t it's also, remember, people should understand, TEPCO is only an umbrella company. All of the companies that, that service TEPCO are U.S. subsidiaries and affiliates. In fact, one of the same companies that services TEPCO that's one of the primaries is the primary company that serviced the WEP reactor, the WEP, the uh, Waste Isolation Pilot Project in New Mexico that caused the catastrophic release of radioisotopes because they put in kitty litter and caused nuclear explosions to occur that contaminated a uh, hydrofracking area that was literally, con literally making radioactive gas and oil wells in the area radioactive. You know, make, you know literally affecting within half a mile of the area. What's going on in America now is the rules have changed, but they've changed very, very little. But they've changed enough that there's at least five major reactors in the United States that are likely to go belly up. They've actually said we cannot comply with these minimalist rules, mm -hmm. and therefore we're going under financially. And uh, here in Southern California, San Onofre said, oh, don't worry, we got $4.4 .4 billion in the bank to do it the sure. 20 year, next 20 <laughs> yeah. years. And I said, I know which bank it is. It's my bank and your bank. It's anybody who's a rate payer 
Yeah. It's not their bank, the bank of the corporation. It's the bank of us. So, uh, and the thing that people don't understand, they're actually talking about burying the waste at the San Onofre reactor site, and the same with reactors all across America. They're not planning on putting it in special containers on rail cars that are specially designed, mm-hmm. moving it to a, a zinc or tin mine five or seven miles down. No, no, there's no plan to actually make a new site like they did the one in, they talked about for years, which, of course, was stupid because it was on a fault zone in Nevada. What they're really talking about is burying it on, on site and off of San Onofre, five and a half to five you know miles off the site, is the San Jacinta upthrust zone. Now, the upthrust zone is what drove the tsunami mm-hmm. toward Japan, but that upthrust zone was 75 to 120 miles off the coast of Japan. This one is between San Onofre and the Catalina Islands. It's five and a half miles off the coast. So you're literally talking about a tsunami zone where they're going to put nuclear waste that they've been storing for 60 years, and there's no intention of moving it. And they said they've got lots of money to, to quote, boss ball the plant, which is also hogwash, because you can't turn this, these things off easily. You have to wind them down over years, and then you have to take all the isotopes and put them in a stable condition in special containers. And ideally, you want to move them off-site to a place where they'll never interact with water tables or any people again, or the danger of terrorists striking it, or just a natural disaster like a tsunami. Mm-hmm. So uh, what I see happening is, uh, even the whitewash level, even the lowest minimalist level of increased regulation is going to make at least five major reactors financially go belly up, and they probably will not do a proper job of either mothballing the plants. Wouldn't be surprised. I mean, so what they're going to do is these plants will be in an unstable condition, just like people don't realize. They say, well, they didn't turn off. So they require no. constant maintenance forever. Constant people don't understand that. circulating water and staff and everybody, and these things, a lot of them, are quite hot, and especially the newer ones where they actually turn them into MOX reactors, which the U.S. government were doing because they wanted to create more plutonium for nuclear weapons. And that's why, for example, in Fukushima, people need to know the MOX reactor was a Nikolt nuclear weapons plutonium detonator generating plant. You do not make a MOX reactor just because you're generating a little more power. You do it because you want to generate plutonium detonator pellets. That's why it was there. Mm-hmm. So sure. this 7,500% plus increase, and I have the isotope information from, uh, you know, from Chris. And uh, when I look at his data here, which shows that the huge radiation spike at Fukushima, multiple records set new workers. And, of course, he talked about cesium-134, 140 becquerels per liter, 7,500% above the January 5th level, record high. Cesium-137, 470 becquerels per liter. And by the way, Becquerels are in uh, liters, and it's in, it does have a per second kind of ratio there. So when Lauren Murray was making statements about Becquerels and didn't understand the per second, it already has a per mm-hmm. second ratio in it, so she doesn't understand this. Right. Uh, the same way was we, as uh, Chris Busby makes statements about radiotoxicology when he has no medical training whatsoever in radiotoxicology, and he shouldn't open his mouth on it. I can because I understand nuclear reactors, nuclear design, Radiochemistry and radiotoxicology was a member of the ACOM nuclear division for years. I took care of plants in Savannah River and their employees making plutonium detonators in Savannah, Georgia. I took care of plants close to Chicago and their employees. And I took care of Rocky Flats employees, including NOVA, that were doing hazmat site assessments on the plant. And they discovered, to their horror, that the radiation levels were hundreds of thousands to millions of times more uh, elevated mm-hmm. when they did ground sampling and air sampling of mm-hmm. the site, even though they had a chain link fence around Rocky Flats and they had a, people literally go out there hiking around the area. And when my boss found out that I knew that Nova guys came in and I had to do an exit hazmat exam, I got fired, which is what happens to you when you find stuff that nobody else, especially the government, wants to know because it's a super fun site. And they were doing evil things, saying all kinds of lies. Also, the cobalt-60, 1.9 becquerels per liter, quadruple from previous record in 2013. All beta emitters, which are high-speed electrons, 15,000 becquerels per liter, 6,000 times above the January 8, 2015 level, 1,300% above the previous record high. What, what I'm seeing here, and there's a thing called I call it the elbow effect. There's an elbow where... You reach a level of 
toxic low, radioisotopes, stress, whatever you want to call it, that in any living thing reaches a point where the organism cannot maintain the more normal processes called continuation of life. Ability to reproduce, ability to eat and may sustain their, their organism, ability to differentiate, and ability to rebuild the organism during a period of time because you're constantly, every organism is constantly rebuilding itself. So the idea that if your stem cells aren't working, if your body can't rebuild the bone structure, the ligaments, the nerves, etc., it falls apart, just like these starfish. And I can't tell you when it'll reach a point, but when you see organisms like the the higher in the food chain, the orca or the killer whales, where there's no babies beyond a year. When you see the seabirds along the Georgia Strait from Dana Durnford, completely dead, not just a little dead, but completely dead, not even insects. No insects, no, uh, no, no predatory we're, we're birds, no bird flight. They, he saw one flock of birds so right. far. And the problem is, you see, they want to assume that it's somehow contained. Uh, one of the doctors, actually Dr. Ron Klatz came and visited me. He was on the show two days ago uh, here at Radiant Studio. He was the founder of the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. He says, it's too bad you're living in Southern California. I said, no, look over that at my desk over there. You can look at the cesium detector. We're basically not getting hit by radiation, hardly at all. Where it's going is hitting the British Columbia uh, coastline area and a little bit toward, a little south toward uh, Seattle, Washington. And then that, that Kuroshio current splits and goes north and south toward Alaska and down the coast. But most people don't realize there's, there's a number of different what I call streams of radiation. There's the fast stream that's moving, that's a constantly carrying new fresh radiation. There's a slow stream that's moving in deep waters of the ocean along the trenches. And then there's a high altitude stream that's probably between 26 to 30,000 feet. Because my experience and the people who have emailed me, and they've had radiation detector in commercial aircraft, have told me it was only when they get up to around 26,000 feet where all of a sudden it spiked and they got massive surges of you know over 2,000 counts per minute. Now, I know some people will try to say on these Discovery Channel and so on that that's a natural increase in radiation. No, it's not. All of a sudden you go from you know 100 or 200 counts or less, you know 50 counts to over 2,000, and then when you drop down just a little bit in altitude, all of a sudden it drops again. Uh, that's because there's a radiation belt there and there's a plume at that level. Now, it might spread out, but it actually can be relatively cohesive. And the problem is because we don't have data, we can actually create a three-dimensional, four-dimensional model of it. I asked uh, two and a half years ago Dr. Uh, Senator Wyden from Oregon and Senator Feinstein, and I talked to her staff and asked them for their nuclear expert, and they refused to put data logging radiation detectors in all the, vehicle, all the aircraft, but Citizens could do it themselves and just upload and say, hey, I'm going to take a detector on the aircraft. I'm going to record that data over that flight, and then I'm going to download that to a database. So, for example, you could do it, Jeff, or I could do it. We could have people commercially just taking their mm-hmm. Spectre Pluses and just take it, clip it to their their seat and record the data. Well, how many counts? What time is it? Where are you, are you are in your flight? And then if we knew the flight path of the airline, we could actually create a data plume map of exactly where the plumes are and where they're going and what velocity and what altitude. If we had real-time data like that, we'd also know when those plumes are going to hit an area where a weather system was going to cause it to fall as rain or snow. So like the radioactive snow that hit uh, Missouri last year. The problem is when we don't have data, it's because they purposely shut it off, like they get rid of, and I confronted the so-called director of radiation under Diane Feinstein. I said, well, you guys, when you took out the radiation detector, you said they're working perfectly fine. I said, well, really, you didn't put the one back in in Idaho after it shot through the ceiling because the radiation level shot over the mountains there and went into orbit, and you guys shut off the reactor, the, the reactor detector from, you know, detecting the radiation from Japan and didn't put a new one in. And uh, you didn't expand the number of detectors or say, hey, let's t- test water, fish, food, just like it was being tested at the University of California, uh, Berkeley Nuclear Radiation Detection Program under Dr. Kai Vetter. Uh, after I contacted him over two and a half years ago, they completely shut down and decided not to even talk to me or email and refused to do any testing on anything. And that's the same with any government department. The only people who have been doing testing are the native peoples of British Columbia, which tested and found radiation and the fishermen in British Columbia and Alaska. Now, what I see coming 
is a catastrophic reduction in health. I can't tell you when it'll hit or who it'll hit first. It'll hit the weak and the elderly. It'll hit the unborn. It'll hit the uh, be people trying to have babies and worried about organogenesis when something's amplified 100 million times in utero. Um, it's going to cause lots of diseases, like we know cesium-137, in animal models causes a catastrophic increase in breast cancer. It's a glandular uh, excitotoxin, and what it does is it grabs every gland in the body because it's an analog of magnesium and potassium and it's concentrated, and it's going to cause a very massive increase in cancer rates. But it's also going to cause cardiac arrhythmias, heart failure, atrial fibrillation, small for dates, lack of reduced release of growth hormones like it is in Japan where these kids don't grow anymore and you can measure their growth hormone and their growth velocity is down to zero or very close to it. So, um, you know, I can make some predictions, but without data, it's only conjecture. And the problem is they don't want us to get data. So they won't even get a dialogue to say, we're going to disagree with you, Deagle, and we think you're a fool. Well, point out why I'm a fool and tell me technically why you can get a better plan. But when you do it that way, when you present it as a scientific dialogue, asking someone to please challenge it, but do it in a scientific and a valid non-hominem way, they don't want to do that. What they want to do is they want to just say you're nuts to ask the question rather than, hey, let's go do and test data and see if we can get a better hypothesis and a better thesis as to what's going on and how dangerous is this. But we're not getting any dialogue from anybody, government, International Atomic Energy No, Agency, we're not going to United either. Nations, no. nobody. No, nobody's going to talk, and nobody's even going to. Nobody's even going to disagree, or even make anything other than. Uh, you know, they're basically even silent. I mean, I even beg people on the show. I said, if you're a radiation uh, expert, if you're a medical doctor, if you're a government agent, if you're anybody, uh, disagree with me. Call in, and not a one in almost four years now, not a one. So what I see happening is uh, what I call gutless evil. It's just disgusting. And people don't understand Fukushima by itself without genetically modified food, which is also sterilizing us and destroying human biology, without fluoridated water, without stacked vaccines, without polypharmacy, which is also rampant, without all of these things, the human race is doomed. Uh, you know, I, my prediction is, and this is, you know, a legal prediction, that within a generation, more or less, human beings will not be able to reproduce except if they submit their gametes to a laboratory. The intelligence and IQ of individuals will be so dumbed down that they'll basically... Oh, it's uh, dropping like sub, a rock. Subhuman... Dropping like a rock. Subhuman robots, or, or what I, I call zombified. Well, that'll give it... Uh an easier road for AI to take over all this, uh, what you're saying. Right, and AI will take our artificial intelligence and upgraded humans and people, you know, for example, I expect in Japan here in the next year or two of them to announce to say, hey, we realize that all you Japanese women can't have normal children, so we've set up a special program so you can submit your ovum and your gametes to your laboratory and we'll make sure we do polar body exclusion to make sure you have a perfectly genetically normal child and we'll even grow the child in a fetal laboratory for you if you don't want to grow it in your body using gamete interfallopian tube transport. And people say, Dr. Deagle, that's just sci-fi. I said, well, no, I'll, no. Give you an equipment, I'll give you an equipment list and show you exactly how you could do it. So when people say, you can't do that, Deagle, I said, well, you're talking to the wrong doctor. I have skill sets, let's put it that way. And what disturbs me is people don't realize whether we could do it is not the question, is whether we morally should do it or whether you should tackle Fukushima Daiichi. And if I was watching from a galactic, you know, 4D channel, uh, <laughs> the, program, the program Earth, uh -huh. I would say as a being in a foreign world, I would be telling all my children beings to, uh, to look away. It's too gross. Look away. Don't turn on that channel. Right. It'll disturb mm -hmm. you. You won't sleep tonight. You'll have nightmares. You'll see these beastly you people committing a form of global genocide, autogenocide. You'll see people ignoring something cataclysmic and thinking everything is fine. In fact, the Japanese are so crazy, they say if you smile, the radiation will hurt you. They actually say that. 
And now, of course, they're planning the you know the Olympics and everything. I think, oh my gosh, this is like uh, if you put a happy face on it, you're not going to get radioisotopes damaging your DNA like cosmic rays. So that's the Fukushima. Then on top of that, we've got ISIS, which we know, you know, uh, I call it terrorists are us. And I like the uh, graphic that you have up on your website, which shows Mossad. We know that the town, Sosa of Amman, Jordan, where ISIS was trained, supplied uh -huh. by American and Israeli and, and, and Academy, which is the Blackwater Security new name, trained there. And now we supply them with satellite phones and equipment and stinger missiles and everything else. And they've gone from 50,000 man force to 200,000. And somehow the globalists think they can control of these guys. At some point, the Israelis who've been deeply involved with getting these guys going, they're not going to control these extreme Islamic maniacs. And Israel will have to resort to the Samson option, which is nukes and biological and chemical weapons. And we will have a cataclysmic nuclear, thermal nuclear war involving Russia and China and everybody. You know, and people say, well, that won't happen. I said, you know, all the controllers that keep telling each other, just like these meetings of the Bilderbergers, most of their marketing is to tell each other they're still in control when they don't control anything, including even their bowels, let alone the world. So I find it really hilarious when I get even feedback from people that are very wealthy, like billionaires, through various channels, that tell me that they're freaked out by the fact that the people with levers of power are very rich, but they're socio-psychopaths that are Satanists. And they really could give a rat's behind whether or not most people on Earth die because their ultimate drug isn't just money and power. It's Megadeth. Not the heavy metal rock group. We're talking about Megadeth. They get off on seeing people die and nations die and human beings writhe in agony as they pass on to the next world. I mean, and people say, you're just exaggerating. I said, no, I'm not. I mean, the ultimate drug to these people is seeing others die in horror. Got and it. that's why Fukushima's left. Yeah. That's why our world is heading to an economic cataclysm in the mark of the beast. That's why they want to get rid of 90% of the human race because they just want to genetically engineer a subclass of, I, I call, uh, you know, the <laughs> troglodytes. The <laughs> no, that's good. Of, that's uh, good. That's e good. All right. Hold on, Bill. We'll come right back in just yeah. a few minutes. Yeah, that's all they we want. Continue. You know, they don't want us around. We're too pesky. Ask questions and everything.